So the summer transfer window is over. Man United signed three players, Dan James, Aaron Wan-Bissaka and Harry Maguire. Maguire and Wan-Bissaka, both two first team defenders, great signings, and Dan James, an exciting prospect. But how good did Man United do overall in this transfer window? What I'm gonna do is run through every single piece of business that United did and give it a rating out of 10, and also an overall rating out of 10 for how United did in the window as a whole. Now I want this video to be a really interactive one, so make sure you look at the top comment, there's a format there, I wanna know your ratings and your overall rating for United's transfer window. But let's take a look. So the first signing I'm gonna look at is right back, and that's Aaron Wan-Bissaka. He was United's number one target, and we went out and got him. Yes, you know, the whole situation with the transfer was a little bit protracted, but that's because Crystal Palace didn't wanna sell for a lesser price, but United got their man. Solskjaer got his man, and he's an excellent, excellent signing. I go as far as to say this is a 10 out of 10 signing. Right back has been such a weakness for United for so long, and Solskjaer got his number one target. And I think wan is the sort of type of signing, the character that Solskjaer wants to bring in, I think is sort of like a textbook signing. Such a good signing for United in every single respect. That's why I'm giving it a 10. And just like Solskjaer got his main target in wan at right back, he got his main target in Harry Maguire at centre back. And I don't think you can underestimate how important this signing is for United. And I'm gonna, again, give this a straight 10 out of 10 because we got our top target. And Maguire, hopefully he can have the sort of impact that Virgil van Dijk had at Liverpool. He's not quite at that level yet. Maybe he can be in a year or two, but Maguire is a proper defensive, powerful, dominant leader. And he's gonna bring an aspect to our defense which it has lacked for so long. And with Maguire in, and with wan in, our back five is De Gea, Shaw, Lindelof, Maguire, and wan our defense is as good as it has been or better than it has been for the last decade, since Ferdinand, Vidic and Evra left, this is the best our defence has looked. Lindelof's going to be a better defender by having Maguire alongside him. So are our fullbacks, so is De Gea. Maguire's just going to improve every aspect of our defence. And getting him, for me, other people would have wanted Delict, other people would have wanted Koulibaly. I probably would have wanted Koulibaly. But I'm going to give Maguire a 10 out of 10, because I think it's going to make that much of a difference to our defence. Now, you know that I've been taking a look at a few 888 sport videos this year and they've released their own Premier League preview and have a guess who they think is going to be the first manager to be sacked. First manager sacked. Frankfurt Lampard. I knew it. Ole's going to crash the wheel. Yeah, Ole Gunner. Ole, Ole Gunner. Yeah, I was going to say that still, uh, but no, I'm not on that still. You'd do a better pun than that, really. <laughs> <laughs> There's really... For me, no chance that Solskjaer is going to be the first manager to be set. It doesn't matter what goes on. He's got the support of the club. He's got the support of the fans. And yeah, it might be a rough ride at some points this season, but he's going nowhere. And it's not often that I agree with the Spurs fan, but expressions are spot on there. There's more chance of Frank Lampard being sacked. Seriously. A summer where they couldn't sign a player under an owner who has a history of just sacking managers. Far more chance of Lampard failing miserably at Chelsea than there is of Solskjaer at United this summer. That might come back to haunt me, but I don't think it will. But can you all do me a favor and head over to the 888 Sport video? There's a link in the description. And just leave a comment about Lampard because there's no way that Solskjaer is gonna get sat first. And in my eyes, Lampard's head is far more likely to be on that block earlier than Solskjaer. Now we absolutely nailed it with our new right back and our new centre back. When it comes to central midfield, United really couldn't have done much worse. We were linked with Bruno Fernandes all summer long. We were linked with Christian Eriksen, hell, even Sean Longstaff. But United did not sign a central midfielder. And for me, I'm absolutely astounded that the club has let this happen. That's why I'm going to give it a zero out of ten. Negative even. But United needed a central midfielder just as much as we needed a centre-back. We're now one injury to Paul Pogba away from having a midfield three of them at Fred and Pereira. That's not good enough to compete with the likes of Liverpool, Spurs and City and Arsenal and Chelsea around us. And that's got to be our ambition. If we showed ambition, and we did show ambition with Maguire and wan Saka, we showed zero ambition when it comes to signing a new central midfielder. I don't know why that is, but it certainly can't be because Solskjaer has full belief in the set of players he has. We're weak in that squad position. And I can't believe that United have gone through this summer 
and not signed a central midfielder. That's why I'm giving this a zero out of 10. And I think this summer as well, United desperately needed a new defensive midfielder. I would probably have argued that was the single most important position that we needed to strengthen. Yes, we needed a new right back, absolutely, and a new centre back, but defence starts in midfield. If we had an all-powerful, ball-winning midfielder, we wouldn't have to rely on our defence as much. Our attacks would start much better because of him, but we didn't go and sign one. Instead, Solskjaer has placed, in my eyes, faith in Scott McTominay. So I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10, and I'll explain that. I think McTominay is going to have a proper breakthrough season. I've seen Sonic in that pre-season. He was so much more mature than he was even last season. McTominay was more comfortable with the ball at his feet. He was more comfortable dictating the game. Now, if he can meet the expectations I think that Solskjaer has of him and the potential that he has, that Mourinho did see, then maybe we didn't need to sign a defensive midfielder. That's why I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. It's a risk from Solskjaer. It's a risk from United. But if McTominay does deliver, I won't begrudge the fact that we didn't sign a defensive midfielder. And nobody else will either. So I hope Solskjaer's faith pays off. And I hope McTominay delivers. Because if he does, we'll have the sort of player that this midfield has lacked for easily a decade. Now, in attack, I think the most important position for United to strengthen was definitely right wing. We haven't really had a proper right winger for some time. And had we got Champions League football, we might be talking about Jadon Sancho right now. But we didn't, and we're not. And we're talking about Dan James, who's an exciting young prospect. And for me, I'm giving this a 5 out of 10 because it's right down the middle. Dan James won't be expected to make a huge impact this season. It's his first year in the Premier League, first year at the top level. He's a young player. He'll be allowed to grow into his role. But maybe, a bit like McTominay in midfield, a bit like Greenwood up front, Maybe Dan James can deliver, can exceed expectations. We're putting a lot of faith in younger players this summer. And I won't ever begrudge a United manager doing that. It's a bit of a risk, but Dan James is an exciting prospect. I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10, as I said. It might work perfectly this season, but at least we've got a new, young and enthusiastic player at right wing. And maybe that's just what that position needed, because everybody was far too comfortable there. But if Dan James can deliver... Maybe it's going to be even better than a 5 out of 10. Now, just as important as buying new players this summer was selling players. And Romelu Lukaku was sold to Inter on deadline day. That was the right thing to do. And after that whole summer, it was a bit ugly, really, how Lukaku went out to and fro. Then he tweeted about the pre-season running stats. Then reports that he fell out with Solskjaer. It was messy. It was horrible. But at least he left. And the reason I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10, because I think Lukaku leaving was the right thing, was because of how it happened. It should have happened earlier. It shouldn't have been as ugly. And maybe it would have given Solskjaer the time to sign a replacement if he did want one. But maybe, as I said, like McTominay in midfield, like Dan James at right wing, Solskjaer is putting his faith in the youth. And he never, ever intended to sign a replacement because of Mason Greenwood, the 17-year-old who absolutely smashed it in the preseason and has been smashing it with the United's academy teams. Solskjaer spoke about him in his pre-match press conference before the Chelsea game and said, look, if I brought a new striker in, I would have blocked the path of Greenwood. And as I said, I won't ever begrudge a United manager giving the youth the chance. And Greenwood has a huge opportunity this year to establish himself, like Rashford did when he got his opportunity, when Martial was injured against Midtjylland. This is Greenwood's chance. And if he can deliver, it's going to be a masterstroke. But regardless of what happens, we're going to see more of Greenwood this year. And that's exciting. And selling Lukaku, absolutely the right thing to do. Now, when it comes to selling other players, United haven't really done as much. And I think when it comes to selling players, look at this rebuild that United are supposed to be doing. If you want to redecorate a room, you clear it out first. You don't just start putting new paint on the walls. And that's what United have failed to do so far. I'm going to reserve judgment on this. I'm going to put a question mark next to it because... The Serie A, Bundesliga and La Liga windows are still open, so they could still sign players. We could still sell the likes of Darmian and Rojo, who absolutely need to be sold. Because this rebuild is just as much about bringing in new players as it is selling the old players that we don't want anymore. And there's so many of them at this club that need to go. Sanchez, it sounds like Solskjaer wants to keep him, if only for the fact that nobody wants to buy him because he's too much 
I don't know. Sanchez, maybe he can turn it around this season. Doubt it. But maybe. But the likes of Darmian and Rojo, they have to go before the, the other transfer windows close for it to be an even, set, even a semi-successful summer in terms of setting players. For United fans, the frustration of this transfer window was born out of broken promises. We were told by Solskjaer that he was going to be ruthless after that humiliation against Everton. We were told that top players wanted to sign for us. We were told that we had money to spend. And United delivered with Maguire and Wan-Bissaka, two top players in two key positions that we needed to strengthen. But United failed in other positions. We needed that new central midfielder. We're very thin and weak in that position in the squad. We didn't sign a defensive midfielder, but Solskjaer has taken the risk with McTominay, just like he's taken the risk with not signing a Lukaku replacement. So United have done good in some respects and bad in others. And that's why I'm going to give an overall rating of 5 out of 10, because for me, this rebuild job is half done. We've sorted our defence out. Finally, United have got a defence you can be happy and confident with. But we haven't got a midfield that we're happy and confident with. Our attackers, they need to all improve for it to be a good season. There's a lot of risk involved in how this transfer window went because Solskjaer's put in a lot of faith in young players. But it might pay off. And United's history has shown that putting faith in the kids can pay off. And I really hope it does. But overall, I'm giving this transfer window a 5 out of 10 because it was great in some respects and it was awful in others. And as I said, this rebuild job that we were promised this summer, that's only half done. Now, I know you can't do it all in one summer, but United certainly could have signed a central midfielder and that would have transformed the feeling of this transfer window for a lot of United fans. Now, I want to know your ratings for every single position that I've talked about there and for an overall rating out of 10 for the transfer window. Look at the top comment on the video that I've left. There'll be a format you can use and leave your ratings there. I'm really, really interested to know what you think about this. Now, if you're new to United People's TV and you're still here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Until next time, though, take it easy.